How many years have gone by? How many people are awake? How many people even think that martial law could come to this great country? My friend Alex Cuppet raised a lot of information about a so-called train upholstery repair station south of Indianapolis. He did intense study and appeared on the scene. He said there were signs up that said red zone and green zone and blue zone. There was an Air Force locomotive there. I didn't know the Air Force dealt with locomotives. I thought they were into jets and airplanes. But nevertheless, there were a lot of uncanny things inside this Amtrak upholstery repair station. There was a lot of welding. There were a lot of uh, gates that you could only enter one way. You could not exit that away. There were bars put up over gates. When information was released, it appeared in some patriotic magazines around the country. Immediately, the signs that said red zone, green zone, and blue zone disappeared. But I have them on videotape. It was too late to sanitize. A lot of people had documentation. When martial law does arrive, when it does come to the USA, there are some incredible, incredible surprises ahead. There are being, right now there are techniques in science that are being carefully hidden. There are advancements so far ahead of your thinking that I wouldn't even attempt to bring them out. This chopper appeared on the tarmac of an airport, a public airport out west. I will avoid saying what city. I don't plan to give the intelligence services or the armed forces or whoever was responsible any friction over what transpired here. Please note that the door is shut in this helicopter. A patriot that is equivalent to a bulldog showed up with a camera. As soon as he pointed the camera, the door was slammed. There are only a couple inches left open. If you look carefully, you will see a canister that looks like a large milk crate from old times. This particular patriot does not understand the word no. There were two men guarding this helicopter with submachine guns in the original photo on your extreme left. There is a man holding a machine gun. There's a guy inside with a machine gun. He crawled across the airport, his friends guarding him. He went inside to inspect the canister, and there were miniature genetic beings, hearts beating, legs kicking. I will not let out any more information. They did a trace. They know where it came from. They know where it went. But apparently, someone is tinkering with science. Genetic engineering is reality. There's a whole lot going on that the public is not aware of. Now, helicopters, detention centers. You've heard my friend Al Cuppet. He put out the warning. That was his expertise. I won't expound on it. But let's tie it back into this subject. People say, never in America, no, not here. In this Tom Life graph from a book on prisoners of war available at your local library, I found an interesting little notation. This map symbolizes detention centers in this country in World War II for German soldiers. Please note at the bottom of this little picture that there were 666 detention centers for German soldiers at the end of World War II. I think if I was working with those detention centers, I would have built 10 more just to say there were 676. I do not understand why anyone in our government would want this number to appear on anything. This is an ad. I'll leave out the product at the bottom. I am not critiquing the company that ran this ad. It appeared in 1972, Better Homes and Gardens. It was for the American housewife. They were introducing the barcode. This group is very well advanced. You understand that this barcode has three codes, the one on the left, the one on the right, the one in the center that never change. Of course, the first half of the barcode is different from the second half of the barcode. It uses a different numbering system. The light, the dark, are read by the laser. They can tell where the product was manufactured, what time, the cost, whatever information they intend to encode. Notice on the right-hand side that two thin lines denote the number six. There are two thin lines above a six. 
All these bars change except the long one extended at the front, the one in the middle, and the one at the end. This is very well known. There have been articles written, books written on this subject. Now, go beyond that. This was 1972. Can you read the subliminal line at the top of the ad? It reads, this is the beginning of the end. My Bible in Revelation chapter 13, verse 17 and 18 states, there'll come a time when people cannot buy or sell and accept they have the mark, they know the name, or they have the number. Every can of food in your cabinet in the kitchen contains this bar graph. You can't buy or sell food without having this number. So what might that lead to? Here we have the number. This number has appeared for decades. I have ads that are 80 years old with the number 666 in them. I will not name the company. There were ads in World War II about shoes for sale. They appeared in major magazines. They would place one shoe beside another one, and they would ask you in the ad, can you tell these shoes apart? This one is very expensive, but guess what the price was of the other one, which was only an imitation. I'm looking for an imitator. The Bible warns us that at the end of time, an imitator will appear, saying is Christ associated with that number. But what about this part about being beheaded? This machine was invented in the 1600s. The Greeks had a very crude form of this machine, but it was used for decapitation in the 1600s. Now I would like to show you a famous mason I found on the website. You may recognize his name. And of course, here's a drawing he presented to the French government about this wonderful machine that would give death without suffering. Now, when will these things come to pass? If you understood subliminal language, if you understood that everything that's going on is right in front of you, you would not have to guess, you do not have to research, you do not have to ask. They are constantly putting it in front of you in books, in movies, constantly telling you what will happen next. For proof, I want to show you a major novel. This novel came out in 1957. That was 40 years ago. This book is available at your local library. It is required reading in some colleges and in some universities. When I go to expos and I speak about the real meaning behind this book, some people get extremely mad I've noticed some people leave imprints in hardened concrete when they leave the room if you critique this book or this author. There are several websites. She has a cult following. That's what the Saturday Evening Post said when they ran an article about this woman. It, was, it utilized the term cult, C-U-L-T. Now, this book in 1957 was written not as fiction. It was truth disguised as fiction. Ran was one of the mistresses of Philip Rothschild, Philippe Rothschild. It's a very well-known wine. Now deceased, but in those days, he ran the world. The top three Rothschilds are called their tribunal, and they make all the decisions. Philip asked her to write this book intentionally. The rich and the powerful call this the code book. The rich and the powerful place a very expensive copy of Atlas Shrugged, upon their coffee table so anyone entering their house, anyone going into the living room will know that they are an insider. Now, all the plans of the Illuminati were hidden within this book. It runs about 1,100 pages. Where are the plans? The same place all the information is placed. It is between the lines, out of context. I want you to take special note of some quotations I've extracted from Atlas Shrugged. In light of all the things I've tried to tell you, let's start with this particular quote. There are two people having a discussion on a railroad. Dagny, I'll always bow to a coat of arms. I'll always worship the symbols of nobility. Am I not supposed to be an aristocrat? The coat of our the coat of arms of our day, please note, 
are to be found where? On the what? Where will we find these? On billboards and in the ads of popular magazines. Again, at the bottom, where do they worship? It's connected with industrial trademarks. And that's from Ayn Rand's book in 1957. That you could only enter one way, you could not exit that away. There were bars put up over gates. When information was released, it appeared in some patriotic magazines around the country. Immediately, the signs that said red zone, green zone, and blue zone disappeared. How many years have gone by? How many people are awake? How many people even think that martial law could come to this great country? My friend Alex Cuppet raised a lot of information there. I didn't know the Air Force dealt with locomotives. I thought they were into jets and airplanes. But nevertheless, there were a lot of uncanny things inside this Amtrak upholstery repair station. There was a lot of welding. There were a lot of uh, gates about a so-called train upholstery repair station south of Indianapolis. He did intense study and appeared on the scene. He said there were signs up that said red zone and green zone and blue zone. There was an Air Force locomotive, but I have them on videotape. It was too late to sanitize. A lot of people had documentation. When martial law does arrive, when it does come to the USA, there are some incredible, incredible surprises.